Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about consecutive integer problems. So let's start out with a relatively easy one. Um, the sum of two integers is uh, 99. What are the integers? So just uh, mentioning this, um, you could probably do this in your head, right? If the sum of two integers and they're uh, right next to each other, consecutive means that they're right next to each other. If the sum of them are 99, then and um, there, it's probably somewhere around 50. So maybe it's 49. Well, I can already think it's 49 and 50, right? Because 49 and 50 is going to get 99. Okay, so the idea, though, for these problems is not to actually get them using guess and check. The idea is to get them using algebra. So the fact that you can actually get the integers is really of very little consequence, all right? Um, that's not what we're trying to test here. The, what we're trying to test is, can you represent the integers algebraically? And oftentimes for questions like this, you will not be given credit unless you do it algebraically. So there may be some clause in the, the problem. Either you're doing it for the regions or you're doing it for a test in my class. I may say you will only get credit if you rep represent these numbers algebraically. And the truth of the matter is, is when you get more difficult ones, you won't be able to use guess and check for them. Okay, so it's good to learn how to use um, algebraic notation on the, the ones that aren't so difficult. So the sum of two consecutive integers. Okay, so what we know about consecutive, consecutive integers is that they're right next to each other. So for instance, two and three are consecutive integers. Three and four are consecutive integers. So what we already know actually is that one is odd and the other one's, uh, one's odd and the other one's even. And I meant to write four here. So three and four are consecutive integers. So if the first one's odd, the second one's even, or if the second one's even, the, or the first one's even, the second one's odd. Okay, so that's something that we already know. Um, does that help us here? Probably not, but it's good to remember that in case we do need it somewhere else. All right, so the way that we do this is we say that the first integer, so we're looking at the first one and then we're looking at the second one. I always like to make this little grid here. The first one I wanna represent as x. Okay, and then the second one, meaning the one that's um, bigger than the first one, is always going to be whatever x is plus one more. Okay, so that's how we can represent them both algebraically. Now the sum of these two integers is 99. So here we have our operation and our equal to sign. Is is always the equal sign, right? That in um, English language, the is is always equal. So the sum of x and x plus one is equal to 99. All right, so now we have an equation and now we're gonna solve the equation. x plus x is 2x plus one is equal to 99. Subtract one from both sides. We have 2x is equal to 98. Divide both sides by two. We have x is equal to 49, okay? Now we're not finished yet. We A lot of times when we have an equation and we get x, we're like, oh, well, I'm all done. But the fact of the matter is, is no, you're not done because the question, you haven't answered the question that was asked. The question was, what are the two integers? And you only have the first integer, okay? So go back and fill in your chart. If x is 49, then the second number must be 50, which is what we said all along. Check, always check it, 49 and 50, the sum of those two numbers is 99, so we're good, okay? All right, now we're getting to a little bit more difficult. This is one step up. The sum of two consecutive odd integers is 40, okay? So again, I wanna do the first and second business. But now, if the first one's x, the think about consecutive odd integers like five and seven, for instance. What do I add to five to get to seven? Two, right? So between seven and nine, I always add two. So if x is the first one, then the next one is x plus two, because think about um, if, if x is odd, to get to the next odd one, odd number, I'm gonna have to add two, all right? So if this is how you represent them both algebraically. So you go x plus x plus two is equal to 40. All right, now we can go ahead and add these two together, All right? Then you could subtract two from both sides, so we're starting to solve the equation here. Divide each side by two, and then, um, so x should be, let's see, uh, 19, right? So here, again, I'm not finished, 19, I've gotta go put this back up in my chart, and 21. So um, let's just make sure the sum of 19 and 21 must be 40, and it is. Okay, so this is good. Um, the consecutive integers that I'm looking for are 19 and 21. Okay, 
Um, now we're on to three numbers. So this is a step up because we're looking at three and they're consecutive even. Always make sure if it says even or odd, um, I usually go ahead and circle it because I oftentimes, um, uh, if you don't get that, if you have skipped over in your reading, if you haven't close read enough and you get even, if you don't see even or odd, you'll, you'll represent your um, integers incorrectly. So we have first, let's do second, and third, okay? Um, so the first number is x, the second number is gonna be x plus two. Now think about, uh, let's write down three consecutive even numbers. Let's go two, four, and six. So if the first one's x and the second one's x plus two because I add two to get from two to four, but now I have to represent um, this next one, well, if I add two onto four, whoops, I would have, the four is represented as x plus two, so if I add another two to it, it'd be x plus two plus two, and that makes sense because to go from two to six, I'd have to add four. I'd have to have two increases of two. So here, this would be x plus four, okay? Now the sum of all these is negative 66, so I'm ready to put it back into the equation. Okay, now let's go ahead and combine like terms. So I have 3x plus 6 is equal to negative 66. Subtract 6 from both sides. Okay, we have 3x is equal to negative. So be careful here because it's negative 66 minus 6. So if I use keep change change, it would be negative 66 plus negative 6, which is negative 72. Okay, so negative 3x is equal to negative 72 divide by three here. Okay, so let me think, this should be 24, I believe. So let me just check here, uh, 12, so that's, yep, yeah, that's 72 right there. Okay, so it should be negative 24, right? So x is negative 24, we are not done. Let's go back and put it in here. So we have 24, 26, and 28. Let's just check all of the, some of these should be, whoops, actually, sorry. And you know what? It's actually gonna be a little bit different because we have negatives. All right, so let's just be a little careful here. Okay, if the first one's negative 24, if I add two to this next one, it's going to be negative 22. So be really careful because when you add two, it actually decre decreases the amount of negative that you have. And here, this is gonna be negative 20, okay? Um, so the, the actually the smallest number is going to be the first number, which is consistent with how we've been representing the first here. The first one means the smallest one, or the number all the way to the left on the number line. So there's negative 24, negative 22, and negative 20. That's how we've been representing the first one, the one that's the smallest or to the left of the others on the number line. Um, so let's make sure these add up to negative 66. 4 plus 2 is 6. And if I added all three of these negative 2s together, I'd get negative 66. So that, I, that is a check on that. Okay? So be super careful. This one had 3. It had consecutive evens. And the sum was negative. So when you added 2 to it, it makes it less and less negative as you increase the number here. Okay? And that is the last slide. And that's the end of the lesson.